So I've got a little bit of mail. Um, yeah. Big boxes. Excellent. I like big boxes. As always, we'll start with the small stuff first. And don't forget to check out the links down below for anything you see here which you may be interested in. Ah, oh, nuts. No, I mean, literally, nuts. There's a bag of nuts. So these are a bunch of three millimeter nuts. Seems to be a couple loose. There's a hole in it. Oh, did I just do that when I opened it? Maybe. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put it in a container anyway. So, yeah, 53 millimeter nuts. Doesn't look like 50, does it? I should have got 100 instead. Hmm. Yeah, I use these in various things, and I noticed I was getting a bit low on them. I use 3 millimeter bolts and stuff quite often, actually. Standoffs, things like that, all 3 millimeters. So, I was getting a bit low on nuts, so I got some more, but I'm thinking I should have probably got more than that, actually. Oh well. Hopefully this isn't damaged, since the way it wasn't packaged particularly well. Yeah, look at this, all bent around. I think that's okay though. Let's try this out. That seems fine. Mechanically it looks okay. Electrically it looks fine. Probably. Yeah, I think it's okay. Those ones on the sides are bent around. I think they're alright. I'm not really too worried. It seems to be okay. This is for a repair project I've been doing. Or will be doing. I started looking at it before on the live stream. But I found the switch is broken and I needed to replace a switch. So I got this as one of the options for a switch I could use. If it physically fits, I could use this one. It's just a single pole 10 position switch. That's the plan. I don't have a glue problem. <laughs> I was getting some more glue stick for the 3D printer. I've been using it a bit recently. I've been doing some printing, so I realized I was probably getting a bit low on it and I'd rather not run out and this stuff's relatively cheap. Just watch out for how much you're actually getting inside the tube. This is 21 grams apparently. Whether they really are, I don't know. But these are specifically marketed 3D printing ones, so it's supposed to be for PLA and stuff like that. So you probably get normal ones from your local store or two dollar shop or whatever it may be, and just get some really cheap ones locally, and they'll probably work absolutely fine anyway. But I thought I'd get these ones. They're, they're cheap still. Now if you can hear some clicking and clunking and stuff like that, it's just my NAS. I bought a new 12 terabyte drive, which is currently in here try and do a backup. So I'm doing it for mm, five days now. It's still going. The problem with doing videos is you have a lot of video content and I've got something like I think it's seven or eight terabytes of video on my NAS which is now backing up onto this NAS. So I wanted to have two NAS with the same data which I'm going to input remotely. Anyway these are some bearings. These are some uh, three by eight by four mil bearings. So I've got two lots there. 20 pieces of those. These are for this. Obviously not all of them, just a couple of them. It occurred to me recently, I was doing a live stream and I had a faulty fan and it's just had bearings which are bad, right? And it is a changeable bearing fan. You can actually take it down, you can take it apart, swap the bearings if you needed to. And I actually took the bearings out of this fan to repair the unit I was working on. And it sort of occurred to me that I've been replacing fans for years and maybe I could just be replacing bearings. I mean, I know it's a thing that could be done. I always knew about it, but I never actually bothered before. And now I'm thinking, I could probably save myself a lot of money by just replacing bearings instead of replacing the whole fan. I mean, sometimes the whole fan does need to go, you know, because they're just noisy anyway. But, yeah. I've got more coming. More switches. This is my second choice. If this one doesn't work, I've got these ones. Quality is probably not quite so good. Different kind of shaft. This is a blind shaft instead of a flat shaft or D shaft. I think they're silver plated though. Look like silver plated. They could be. I think they're okay. But this is an option if this one doesn't work. I've got these smaller ones. So I'm not sure this one actually fits. So. And I realised I don't actually have many of these switches. So yeah, you know. You know what I'm like. You know, if I find out I need one of something, I'll buy a lifetime supply. I don't have a problem, it's fine. And the next thing, what's in here? Nice, I tried to protect it. Alright, sewer clips. So these are used on the fans as well, I've got these for the fans. So these are used on the fans to lock the things in place. So I thought I'd get a bunch of these too, because I didn't actually have any. So. Obviously I don't need these ones for the fans, but it's mostly the smaller ones. But I thought, well, if I'm going to get a set, I might as well just get some which are universal. Who knows what I'll use them for one day. I've got a bit of a spending spree recently. I've been 
buying a few things we mean to buy for a while. So we've got a three meter HDMI cable, slightly longer one than normal. Three meters. And a three meter Toslink cable. Or well, it's also optical cable, we want to call it. It's got these little clipping ends on it. I don't know if you can see that or not for the bag. So we can see those connectors through there. Also it's got a little potato piece on the end. Nice right, so little Toslink cables. I've currently got a one meter cable, which is way too short because I can't actually move things around. This is using my home theater system. I can move the amplifier and stuff around and then plug it into the amplifier and then I have to try and reach around and get the cable and plug it back into the TV again, only just reaches. And uh, I got sick of doing that, so I finally bought myself a bigger cable. Years ago when I first got these cables, they are really expensive. Now they're cheap, it's like 10 bucks or something for this thing. It's like, wow, come a long way. Last time I bought an optical cable, it was something like $50. So, uh, yeah, much better. Right, the big boxes, let's get onto these. We have some air duster spray. I was getting very low on it. Don't need it very often, but when you need it, you need it. So I've got some more of that. A roll of solder. So this is a silver solder, much like the other stuff, which I've all been using for a while at multi-core, but slightly thinner, it's 0.25 millimeters in diameter, and it's a silver tin lead alloy, which works quite well. So I prefer the silver solder slightly better quality you pay more for it i think the sort of things i work on require high quality solder so i pay more for it right here we go we've got some ducting and this other piece here is a uh air inlet hood thing to give you a clue one weighs quite a bit more but that's what's in it. Let me get one of these things for ages. The price has always put me off though. That's why I made my own fume extractor which is over on desk over there. I did a video about that. Yeah, it's worked okay for me for years but it's not quite as good as a proper one. You don't get the same kind of filtering and that sort of stuff so I decided to go and oh it's got a remote control. Interesting. <laughs> um, okay, cable. So I decided to go and buy a proper one. I just hope I can fit it underneath my desk. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Of course, I didn't actually look at the measurements to know what size it's going to be, but I made an assumption. And you know what assumptions do? I'm going to have to tip this thing over sideways to get it out. So I was hoping it's going to be about three quarters the size of this, but I can probably still make room for it. So you've got a little display on it. Flow control, stuff like that, same as on a remote. Now, I didn't actually look at the specs or anything like that. I just bought it. I need a proper fume extractor. I've been making do for years, you know, decades making do. I thought, nah, I've got the money, I'm going to buy myself a diesel fume extractor. You know, I should be looking after my health like that. So let's look inside this thing. It's got the foam seal inside there. And there's filter element and it sounds like it's got antibody carbon inside it but because I don't do that much soldering to be honest it's not like I do it commercially this filter element should last me years <laughs> I'll be surprised if I ever use it up and in the bottom there is obviously the fan control system and stuff in there so it's supposed to be quite quiet so here's a filter element in there another filter here All right so that top filter which is what's in that other one there it's like a pre-filter a bag of those and you've got this other filter element here which is on top a heavy filter or something and you've got even more down there which is obviously the main block filter which is what we have to replace when you completely use it up but that's good I think this will be fine it's 385 or 195 by 250 dimension so cool excellent now I've got to find a space for it Shall we turn it on and see how loud it is? I think we should do that. And there's the specs for it just down here. So it's less than 55 dB, 330 cube meters per hour, and 14 kilos. IEC power socket, we've got a built in fuse just here, and obviously a main switch. Nice, solid, clunking switch. 210 watts apparently. I suppose it depends on which power setting you've got. Right, let's turn it on for the first time. 
Okay, those little self-tested lights. Turn it on. Wow. This got some suction, alright. Anyway, low setting is not too bad. Still got a fair bit of suction there. And this will definitely be a lot quieter once I'm underneath my desk and in place because that's kind of tucked out of the way and shielded a bit. But that's got heaps of suction, that's brilliant. So it's got 10 speeds. Excellent. That should be sucking components up any time. So also there's this time set and OK setting buttons here as well. I'm guessing that means it will turn on for a certain period of time and turn off again, or it will only run for a certain period of time. So you don't forget to leave it on or something like that. But that seems good. I've just got to set this thing up somewhere. I like the way it's on wheels, so you can move around easy. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. I should have bought one of these things years ago. But, you know, the cost has put me off. Because I'm a tight ass. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just, I like to do things cheaply if I can. So basically, the money I get from Patreon and YouTube membership, stuff like that, they go towards the channel. And I put that money back into the channel. And even things like when you're buying things from Mailbag, like this Mailbag, if you go and buy some things from AliExpress, where the links may go to, I get a little bit of money from that. Usually not much, you know. It's not much. But over time, it adds up. And it means I can put that into other things. And that money's gone towards this. I think probably 25% of the money of this was paid for by support from people. So that really helps, you know, that makes a difference to everyone actually buy one of these things or not, so that's great. So anyone that supports me, thank you very much. To be fair though, people which watch my videos, in a way that's a form of support, sharing the video around, that's also supporting me, giving me a like, that is supporting me, commenting down below, that's also supporting me. All those things help, right? It's not just financial donations, which obviously better buy things like this, but all the other things are also support and help. So I really appreciate everyone who watches your videos and comments and gives you a thumbs up and shares them especially. All those things really help the channel. I mean, I've got 30,000 subscribers now. I finally got to 30,000. It's been a long time coming. And I'd like to get up to 100,000, but it's going to take a long time. If I ever get there at all. We'll see. I'm only going to play with my new toy and set all this up. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.